Like, you know what my biggest fear for my children are? My biggest fear for my children are the people they date. My biggest fear for my son is the woman he falls in love with. Because if he falls in love with a bum, then all his hard work goes down the drain. And I'm more afraid for my son than my daughter, okay? Because if my daughter ends up with a bum nigga, okay, she's not gonna get, she's she's not gonna have to, to uh, get dragged through child support. You understand what I'm saying? Just because she had a baby with a bum nigga. She's not gonna get dragged through the mud. She's not gonna get dragged through the system, okay? But if my son has a baby with a bum bitch, oh, forget about it. Let's let it! Oh yeah, we lit, lit box. When I'm turned up, it go down. You know how I get, you know how I get. You know I'm legit, you know I'm legit. You know I be lit, you know I be lit. And I'm on a mission to hit every city. When you see me get with me, it's lit. Lit, lit box TV. It's lit! Hi, right, welcome to Lip Box TV. I'm Lord I Kim, and today we're gonna finish up on this child support video. I'm gonna post the um, links to the actual motions. I'm gonna put the motions on the screen. We're gonna talk about that, and I'm, I'm gonna show y'all pretty much, give y'all a quick rundown on, you know, pretty much how to submit the motions and stuff like that, and just talk about a few things. But before we get into this video. This is for entertainment and educational purposes only. If you need legal advice, go get you a lawyer or something and get some professional legal advice. This is just my opinions and just the way I do things, okay? But um, yeah, before we get into it, I'm gonna tell you a story about um, my mother and my father, right? Um, like my father, he told me how to believe in myself, but my mother, like all my hustle come from my mother. My mother is, was straight up just hustler. Like if, if I came to my father and was like, I got a dinosaur, can you help me sell it? My father be like, will you get a dinosaur from God? But if I call my mother like, I got a dinosaur, can you help me sell it? She'll be like, I don't, you never sold the dinosaur, but let me make a few phone calls. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just my mother. She just, she figured things out. Like most women do. Shout out to the women who just be out here figuring it out. Because, you know, sometimes you just got no choice, you know? So, shout out to my mother. Um, but, um, yeah, my mother was the gangster. Her favorite line, her favorite line was, uh, I'll cut you too short to shit. You know, like that was her favorite line. Like she'll she'll be coming from somewhere and she'd be like, oh, I was in the elevator and this man, you know, it was just me and him and he gave me a weird look and I swear I just put my hand in my purse and grabbed my knife because I was going to cut him too short to shit. <laughs> so that's where I get all my gangster from, from my moms. You know, um, my father never really, uh, growing up, my father never gave us money. You know, he didn't really have any money to give us. You know, but the, the the weird thing is, it was just a different time. Like, um, um, my mother, like, my mother and father had three kids. My mother had five kids, but her and my father had three kids, three boys, right? And um, back in that day, you know, when 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 women went to get public assistance. It was more about sticking it to the man and not sticking it to their man. You know, it was more like, you know, when back in the days, this, let me, let me back it up. Back in the fifties and sixties, right? When you wanted to get on welfare, you just went on welfare and they asked you just who the baby father was. You could say, I didn't know. Okay. And they'd still give you public assistance. Okay, fast forward to the 70s and 80s. You go in there, you say you don't know, they say, well, well, you need to tell us somebody. So you could give them any name. You could give them any name and say, hey, this is this is my baby father. This is what he told me his name was. You know his social? No, I don't know his social. You know his date of birth? No, I don't know his date of birth. And you had how many kids? Uh, well, I know his date of birth, but I don't know his social security number. And that's what it was. So the woman would still get public assistance and the man wouldn't be put on child support. But then the system caught on to that. So now it's like, okay, you want public assistance? 
then you need, we need to know who the father is or we can't help you. You understand now, when, when they started, in my mother's era, when they started telling them that, it was kind of like the women of that era, like I said, they, it was more about sticking it to the man, not being vindictive to their baby father. So if they could get the, it was really all about child support. If I could get this help from the system without dragging this man through the mud, then that's what I'm gonna do. Nowadays, you could tell a woman, you could get public assistance, but he, you can't drag him through the mud or don't worry about him. And they'll be like, why, why, why he ain't got to do? Because it's more about dragging a man through the mud than the actual child support. A lot of these women, it's not really about the child. It's about manipulating and controlling uh, a, a man because he did, it, the relationship just didn't work out. And that's just really what it is nowadays. A lot of these chicks just be bitter that things didn't work out. For the most part, those are the ones on, you know, that's not on public assistance. The ones that's on public assistance, oh, it don't matter if you good to her. It don't matter if you take care of that kid to the best of your ability. It don't matter if you hit her off with money every week. Public assistance, if they know you're the father, they're coming to you for that money they give her, okay? So I just wanted to explain that, you know, because, and it's like, it's crazy. Like, remember how back in the days when your grandfather would leave the house to the family and all of that? You know, <clears throat> and like, oh, grandpa, grandpa left us this. And you notice that don't go on too much anymore. You know why? Because grandpa on child support. And when you're on child support, they, they take your uh, driver's license. They suspend your driver's license. They take your passport. They mess up your bank account. You know, it, it's a lot of stuff you can't do. They'll, they'll, they'll garnish your paychecks, you know, and, and they'll put stuff on your credit report. But we're going to talk about all of that and show you different ways to deal with a lot of this stuff. Right. But, you know, um, let me give you a quick scenario. Right. Because this this before I get into it, because I, I just want you all to understand why I'm I'm doing this. So because a lot of people was like, well, why you wouldn't want people to pay child support? That's stupid. You you not making men take accountability. Y'all don't think y'all just moving off of emotions. OK, so now if you are female and you have a son, Put your son in this scenario. If you don't have a son, then put your brother in this scenario. Put Just put a man that you really care about in this scenario as a teenager, okay? So now you got this dude, he meet this girl, right? He's 16 years old, she's 16, right? They get together. And you know they they you know, she didn't she wasn't taught anything by her family. He really wasn't taught anything by his, uh, by his family about getting together and making babies and you know stuff like that. So they get together, they they hanging out, they like each other, they have unprotected sex, and they make a baby. Okay, so now they make this baby. The female, she's 16 years old. Like, what can she really do? Don't get it twisted. There are some young females out here who go get it. But on average, a lot of these chicks at 16 years old ain't got nothing going for themselves. So if they don't got a good family support system, you, you know, they're going to have to run the public assistance. And that's what just most of these chicks do. Because And just think about it. The dude is 16 years old. Like, what can he really do? You know? So, you know, now you got babies having babies. So, you know, you got two teenagers getting ready to have a baby. Okay? So the female is messed up. She can't, she can't take care of the baby, so she go to public assistance, okay? The man is messed up. He can't take care of the baby, so he run around looking for work or whatever whatever he trying to do, hustle up, whatever, whatever he could do, right? So the female, she go gets help. But in order to get that help, she say, oh, you got to give me, they say, you got to give me the baby father's uh, social security number and all that. So now they attack this, 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 this baby father at 16. At 16, they're coming at him for child support. At 16 years old. Saying, oh, you need to go find a job, you need to do this. Now, no one is taking the time to teach this man how to be a father. No one's talking to him about the importance of being a father, but everyone is expecting him to be this amazing father. And most of these young men never even had a father to even know how to begin being a father. Okay? So, that's... That's one thing, okay? So now, is it fear for something a young man did at 16 to be haunting him at 27 years old? To be haunting him at 35 years old? 
to still be haunting them at 40 years old. Like, we all made mistakes as teenagers. A lot of you females made mistakes as teenagers, okay? Imagine just because you had a baby at 16, 17, your life is ruined. You can't get a house, your driver's license is suspended, you can't get a passport, they're garnishing your check, you can't have a bank account, and they're ruining your credit. Imagine if that was happening to y'all ladies because this is what's happening to men. And, and, and it's crazy how some of y'all think that's funny. Like, y'all really think that's funny. But see, this is the thing. Think about when you was young. Didn't you think different? Didn't you look at things different? Didn't you get old and change a little bit? And, and for the better, for the most part? Okay, and you look at things different. So that's 16 year old, 17 year old that had that baby. He don't think the same at 27. He might got his head screwed on straight at 27. He might got his head screwed on straight at 35 and might want to do things and fix things and make things better. That's hard to do when you got 10 years, 15 years of backed up child support. Because it started when he was 16, he didn't have a job, okay? 17, he didn't have a job. 18, he found a job and they started taking the money from when he was 16 to 17 because he ain't paid. So now he backed up, he get discovered, he get his check, he look at his check, he did all these hours and he look at his check and they like, yo, he like, yo, what is this, man? Oh my God, the hell with this, man. And he go buy him some weed and he go stand on the block and sell some weed because it's more profitable. It makes more sense. I make my weed money, ain't nobody bothering me for my weed money. Can't nobody garnish my weed money, okay? So we talking about young people here trying to get their lives together that's being attacked as if they already got their lives together and no one's even giving them help. Like these courts, these courts are supposed to help you. They're not supposed to allow you to sign that acknowledgement of paternity without counseling you. And they know that. And because they don't do that, you can have that default judgment or whatever type of judgment you got uh, thrown out, you know? And it's like this. Yes, a young man should be able to handle his responsibilities, but he should not be ruined. Ruined, you know, before he get a chance to figure out how to even do it, how to be a father. It's like we ruining these young men before we even give them a chance to be a father. We're expecting them to be a father and, and, and it just don't work like that. We're expecting them to take that long ride. So now let me take you into another scenario, right? In this scenario, the man is the, the blueprint, the woman is the manufacturer, all right? And, and they're making cars, okay? So, the woman tells the man, I want to make a car. And the man says, I think I would like to make a car too. So the woman says, yeah, we're going to make a car. Let's build a car. And in nine months, we're going to ride off into the sunset and live happily ever after. So the man go, you know what, I like you. I don't mind building a car with you and riding off into the sunset. So they stood, So he give her the blueprints. He got the blueprints. He said, here's the blueprints. So now he give her the blueprints and the woman start manufacturing the car. It take nine months to build this car, okay? So she manufacturing the car, right? Everything is sweet. One month go by, two months go by, three months go by, they have a situation. Okay, now there's so many situations that can mess up a relationship. I'm not even going to name a specific situation, right? But they have a situation that ar arise and the man is like, you know what? I was just thinking about this and I don't want to make a car anymore with you. I don't, I don't, I don't want to ride out with you anymore. Understand? I don't want to build a car with you and I just don't want to ride out with you no more. And the woman goes... It's four months, five months down the line. The woman goes, well, it's too late. I already started building a car. And you said you wanted a car. Okay? So I already start building it. So when it get here, I hope you're ready to ride out. And the man is like, I don't care if you started building a car already. I'm telling you, when that car get here, I'm not getting in it. I don't like you no more. When I, when I said that, I liked you. Now, for whatever reason, I don't like you anymore. So when this car come... I'm not getting in. So they go their own little ways and time go by and nine months come up. And the lady, the woman decides that she's gonna keep manufacturing the car, okay? And now let's keep in mind, if the woman said, you know what, I don't wanna manufacture this car anymore. It doesn't matter what the man say if she don't wanna manufacture that car. If he say, well, I still want you to do it and she don't wanna do it, it's not gonna happen. If he say, I still want you to do it, and she don't want to do it, it's just not going to happen. 
You understand? If the man want the baby, it doesn't matter. If he don't want it, it doesn't even matter. It's all about what the female wants, okay? If she wants it, she's gonna give birth. If she don't, she's gonna have an abortion, okay? So now, nine months come, she pulls the car out. The car's beautiful. She pull the car out. She call him up. Yo, the car's here. Where you at? Yo, I told you I wasn't getting in that car with you. I don't. No, no, I don't care what you say. I don't care. We made this car together and you gonna get in this car with me and ride out. You gonna get in this car. I don't care how, what you say. You getting in this car. Like, think about that scenario. That's what women are really trying to do. Y'all trying to force cer certain men in the car. Now, if you was the man, the whole nine months was like, yeah, I'm getting in the car, I'm getting in the car. And then nine months come and the car get here and you don't get in the car, you're a sucker. That sucker, you're, you're a sucker for that, okay? Because you made her believe that she was gonna take the ride, had her build the car, and now she built the car and you don't wanna get in the car. You're a sucker for that. But if you told her, before the car was built. I don't want to get in that car. I know I said I did before, but I, I changed my mind because we have the right to change our mind, okay? She can't force you to get in that car, okay? And that's what the courts is doing. The courts is kind of like forcing us, forcing men to get in the car. And in this country, you can't force anybody to do anything. That's their laws, that's their rules. The, the, the government and state cannot interfere with people's livelihood. They can't, they can't do that. They can't force you to do anything, okay? So they trick you into believing they got rights over you. So, but, but women, think about this. Just, just, just use logic for a second. If, if a man don't want to get in that car, do you think trying to force him in the car is going to make him appreciate the ride, even if he gets in the car? Wouldn't it be a better ride if you could just convince him to get in the car and why he needs to be in this car with you? Wouldn't that make more sense? But no, what y'all do is y'all try to force somebody in the car and then get mad when it ain't a sweet ride. Like, what do you mean? You forced me in this car. I don't even, even want to be in this car. And, and, and technically, I, I just gave you the blueprints. You're the manufacturer. If you didn't want this car, I wouldn't be here regardless of how I felt. And, that, and that's why most men feel like you're responsible for that, especially the ones who said, I didn't want the baby, okay? Now, the, the question is always, well, it's a man's responsibility to put on a condom. That's like, yes, it's a man's responsibility to protect his blueprints if he value himself. If you value yourself, you're going to want to protect your blueprints. You don't want to just let your blueprints fall any place and somebody pick it up and start manufacturing your, 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 your work. You understand? Like, you don't want that. But, you know, as much as you want to protect your blueprint, it's also a female's responsibility to not just be accepting blueprints from everybody. You understand? Like you just, you just gonna let this dude just give you his blueprints and you gonna just manufacture anybody blueprints. You don't know nothing about this man. You don't know nothing. You, you, you already see he manufactured some, uh, uh, he gave somebody else some blueprints and they manufactured something and he ain't go along for that ride, but you still gonna manufacture some more cars with him? Knowing he ain't a ride or die type of dude? But this is what's happening. And then y'all want to blame people for the bad decisions y'all make instead of taking accountability. And then when Father's Day and stuff come, y'all want to just bash men and uh, be just because you picked the bozo who lied and said he was going to take the ride and didn't take the ride. So it's like this. What they try to do with that acknowledgement of paternity and the birth certificate, when you sign those papers, you are signing up to take the ride. Okay, so if you're someone that was like, I don't want this baby, and then you go into court, and then you sign an acknowledgement of paternity, or you do that, then they just force you to take the ride. You understand? And signing the birth is giving acknowledgement of paternity is contracting with the state. So you just contracted with the state when you did that. And I be trying to explain to people, like, th listen, if, if my, my son's 19, right? One of my sons, when, when he had a, a child, I'm going to make sure that 
the woman, if they're talking about having a baby, the minute they discuss that, that they draw up their own contract and sign that and get it notarized on how they're going to deal with their children and never allow a third party to come in between it without permission from both, without consent from both parties, period. You can do that. Like people, people bugged out. Like you can sign your own marriage certificate and it's really legal and it got a legal standing. You don't have to go register your marriage with the courts because that's all you're doing. And when you register something, you're, you register your car to motor vehicles, they own it. You register your kids in the hospital, they own your kids. You register your relationship to the courts, they own anything. If you register, if, if you had a necklace and I said, hey, I got, you could come register your necklace over here. The minute you register your necklace with me, I own it. I own it. You understand? So we got to understand that, you know, and, and, and these, these, these vindictive baby mothers, see what's happening is the disrespect is, it, it outweighs everything. So yeah, a, a man is not handling his responsibilities, but when you disrespectful to him because of that, instead of trying to create understanding as to why he's not helping, or instead of thinking of ways to convince him to get in the car, you disrespect him for not getting in the car. And you don't even understand what this man's been through. You don't understand his training. You don't, you don't even understand what he, you know, the, the millions of things that's going through his mind for the reasons he feel like he, he don't want to do it or can't do it or scared to do it. A lot of people just be afraid. So it's kind of like we just need to start talking to, to each other and, 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 figuring, and, and figuring it out. Like, you know, like really make our own contracts while we on good terms, you know? Because these, these, these vindictive baby mothers, what happened is you, you, you on public assistance, you know you could get the public assistance without giving up the man. You know that, okay? Because you know people who did it, okay? But you like, fuck that nigga. Why should he not have to pay? Why should he, he ain't paying you? He ain't paying, if you're on public assistance, he's not paying you. They're giving you money and taking money from him that you're never gonna see. So if he was a dude that was helping you on the side, like most dudes are, once that happens, it's like, oh no, nah, I ain't, he, most men ain't gonna give you nothing after that. They on child support. I was looking out for you. Now I'm on child support. So it's crazy. But then it becomes like this. Now, man, it's like, you gotta be careful. Like, you know what my biggest fear for my children are? My biggest fear for my children are the people they date. My biggest fear for my son is the woman he falls in love with. Because if he falls in love with a bum, then all his hard work goes down the drain. And I'm more afraid for my son than my daughter, okay? Because if my daughter ends up with a bum nigga, okay, she's not gonna get, she's she's not gonna have to, to uh, get dragged through child support. You understand what I'm saying? Just because she had a baby with a bum nigga. She's not gonna get dragged through the mud. She's not gonna get dragged through the system, okay? But if my son has a baby with a bum bitch, oh, forget about it. Because she's going straight to welfare. That's a fact. She's going straight to welfare. And they're coming for my son. I know that. This is, the, this is just the way the game works. So now, if she's a working chick, then I gotta, you got to make sure she come from a good background and, 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 and she get it. You understand? But like I said, if, if she try to throw you on child support, all you got to do is say you don't want a contract and it's over with. It's a little more difficult, but it's the same concept when they're on welfare. You know, it's just the same concept, but the welfare people, they nasty, they, they conniving, they're liars, you know? So let's get into these motions real quick so we could get up out of this, uh, we could get uh, dudes out of these situations. So the first two motions, and I'm gonna put them on the screen and I'm gonna uh, post the link in the description for both links and y'all can have these. Like I pay for these, but y'all can have it for free. But if y'all want me to guide you and walk you through it, you're gonna have to pay because it's it's it, it's it's a lot of stuff okay it's a lot of stuff to go over but but it's not that difficult to absorb once you get the concept of what's really going on so um the first thing we're going to talk about is 
the notice of motion to cap the arrears right hold on let me pull this up real quick all right so at the top of the motion to cap respondents arrears we're going to deal with this motion first at 500 pursuant to uh, uh family court act section 4131 g right so at the top you see the docket number that's the docket number you're going to get from the original case the original uh child support case you're going to go get the docket number right and then this uh the CSMS number is another number you're going to need to put on your motion that's probably like if you get the letters from uh child support with the arrears and all that you probably see that number there right if right here you see where your baby mama name go there your name go there it's very simple you just telling them please take notice that on such and such date i want to be heard you know and then you just put that information in and it's describing how the 500 dollars how you, you, know, you want your arrears cap at 500 dollars because you were below poverty uh uh your income was below the poverty level so now uh then you put your name there the date you put your date and your name and then we're gonna go to the next page again you just put the docket number baby mama name the csms number your name and then in this section you're gonna explain like one through nine you just really explaining like um the situation so it's like you saying he that you are the respondent and above entitled proceeding that this affidavit is made in support of the respondent's motion hereof. So yes, this is this is the affidavit section. So technically up here, I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna write it on the screen, but this uh, above where it says notice of motion to cap respondent's arrears on page number two, above notice of motion, it should say affidavit for notice of motion to cap the respondent's arrear. Okay, you don't, I mean, you could put it, you don't have to put it, they still gonna bring it up on the calendar. Okay, and then this respondent has never filed taxes and had any gainful employment. If you never filed taxes, then you put that. But if say you did file taxes, but say you was in jail for eight years, then you say, oh, for the past eight years, the defendant was in, the uh, uh, respondent was in jail. And then you get proof that you was in jail and you send them that because you in jail, you definitely under the poverty uh level you know and respondent has been you know and then it says how you take care of someone else if you take care of someone else you can say what you've been doing in this time like if there's some people who help out family members that get a little bit of money from that and whatever and then um you know everything else is pretty much self-explanatory uh besides his monthly food stamps respondent only source of income is and you add that if necessary. If you get more money, then some people just get food stamps. Some people don't get no food stamps. Some people don't get nothing. You know, you got to let them know your financial situation, you know. And then it's the Family Court Act. It just breaks down the act. And ergo just means, number nine, ergo just means therefore. So since respond, therefore, since respondent's income has always been below the federal, the federal poverty guidelines, he is respectfully entitled to the benefits of Family Court Act Section 4131G in its entirety. Now, real quick, this is uh, for entertainment purposes only. This is not uh, legal advice. Um, but in court, what, see, what they're going to do is they're going to try to make you see, this is why you got to study, people. Because you're gonna go in and you're gonna present this, and they're gonna know you're right, and they're still gonna challenge it. They're not gonna. In court, it's not like you put these motions in and they go, "Oh, yeah, you right, my bad." It don't work like that. It don't work like that. They gonna try everything to to not give you what you came in there for. Okay, it's a business, and they're not in the business of giving you what you want. They're in the business of taking what they want from you. Okay, so you gotta understand that. They are going to try to say, well, why haven't you looked for a job? Say you wasn't in jail and you was in the street. They're going to say, well, why haven't you looked for a job? And you have to be smart enough based on your research and your studying to go, well, what does that have to do with me being under the poverty level? Who cares if I look? I, I did look for a job. There was no, there was no jobs. Some of the jobs I would have took, they would have garnished it, my check so much, I wouldn't have been able to survive anyway. So I didn't take the job. 
It's a bunch of different reasons you can give them, but they're going to try to come at you like, well, why didn't you look for a job? Why in, in such and such amount of years you didn't find a job? Such and such, yeah. Well, that's the situation. And then so you 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 got to, you know, like I said, try to go in there with a witness. If it's one of them big courts, you want to go in there with a witness. You understand? So, and but then page three on this is just the part where the, the you get it notarized. Once the notarized, once you get it notarized, it becomes a sworn uh, document. Okay, that's what the notary does. So that's kind of making it your affidavit because you your affidavit is a, a, a sworn testimony. Okay, written. Okay, so this is your written testimony of what happened to you and why you need to be need things to be changed. All right. So that's the motion to cap arrest. Now let's get to the motion to. Uh, Let's get to the motion to, con to, to contest paternity. This, this is this is what you're gonna use right here to challenge the acknowledgement of paternity. Like if you signed that acknowledgement of paternity and you were not counseled and, and, and made aware of the consequences of, of signing that document, then this is the motion for you. Like, or if you, you or if you signed it and you was under duress, like she might have said something like, Well, if you don't sign this, you ain't gonna be able to see the baby. That's a threat. That's threatened, that's a threat. You understand that she's not supposed to do that. Okay? So this one is to to contest the actual paternity and demand a paternity test if one hasn't been taken. For that. Like for the people who just who did sign okay because you, you but you could kind of come at it like you know i signed under duress you could challenge it like even if you did sign you could challenge it saying i i, I challenged it because i'm challenging it because i signed it under false pretense okay but it's the same thing you put the docket number the csms number you put her name you put your name um you pretty much tell them when you want to come to court um you put your name and then the second page it's the same thing it's 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 just it's an affidavit you know the app this is the lc this one says it affidavit in support of motion to contest acknowledgement of paternity pursuant to 42 usc 666 it's crazy that that code is 666 that's crazy 5 c i and 42 usc 666 5 d 3 okay so it's 5 c 1 and 42 UFC 666 5D3. So that's like code 666, paragraph 5, section D, point number 3. You understand? Stuff like that, right? So it's the same thing. The responding in the, you are the responding in the above proceeding. This affidavit is made in support of, of, of your motion, okay, which is above. This is the motion right here. This is the affidavit. The first page is the motion. The second page is the affidavit. And then you say in number four, number four says respondent was never given notice orally or through the use of video or audio equipment and in writing of the alternatives to the legal consequences of and the rights and responsibilities that arise from signing the acknowledgement of paternity. It's like they have to do certain things, but if you don't know they have to do certain things, then they're not going to do it. You're just going to get duped. Because you didn't even realize that they were supposed to do certain things before they push certain papers in your face. But in the hospital, they just, you know, that's what they do. They, it's, it's just like these, 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 these goddamn activists, man. They come at you at these, this, this moment where you're just so emotional. You understand? And then they just start shoving papers and everything in your face. And you just, oh, the baby. Oh, oh yeah, the baby. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, sign here too? Yeah. And they catch you. A lot of the, like, and, and then they get you. So you got to be, you know, you got to teach your kids that everything they sign is a contract. You got to teach some, a lot of adults that. They don't know that. They just sign here. Oh, okay, where? Sign where? You just contracted with those people. You might not have wanted to do that. You just think it's a signature. What, what the hell you think they need your signature for? Just to see how it look? No. Because they need you to agree to something. So you got to remember that. And then it says respondents... Stay. he signed the acknowledgement of paternity under duress. This was in my case. If you was under duress, then you put under duress because that's your case, you know? And petitioner specifically, and then you name your baby mama, put respondent 
under duress by stating that respondent would not be able to see the baby unless the sign unless he signed the acknowledgement of paternity you can't do that okay uh and then you go on about you talk about how your driving privileges and all that were suspended and then the third page is the same thing you just get it notarized and once you get it notarized that's it you bring it to the court understanding you and, and you make you make uh th three copies because you're gonna have to give if they own if they're on public assistance you don't have to mail anything to the baby mother because public assistance is going to do everything if they're not on public assistance then you're going to have to forward the motion and the affidavit to to the courts you're going to have to you're going to have to matter of fact you're going to need four copies because you're going to have to put give one to the courts you're going to have to give one to the child support agency. You're going to have to give send one to your baby mama. And you're going to have to keep one for your records. Okay? But if you are, if she's on public assistance, then you only need the three. For the courts, for the public assistance, and for your records only. And that's pretty much it. And you you just go in there. Like I said, if 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 anyone needs help, um, y'all can hit me up at info at noisyneighbors.com because you know that's my thing too like we got to start making noise out here that's what the whole noisy neighbor thing is about that's what noise is about it's just about making noise like making real noise you know not this 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 no that there no pit no real noise that's what noise is about making real noise so if you if you want my direct help with this situation um you can hit me at info at noisyneighbors.com because yeah, like this, 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 this system of child support, like, like, like I said, just think about it. Like a lot of these people that's been put on child support, it happened when they was teenagers and they made mistakes. And a lot of them is older now and they think different, but the system is still on them the same way. And and that needs to change. Like we don't get no slack. Like we, we like, like come on now, ladies. Like think about that. Think about just because you, if you, just because you had a baby with a dude. That wasn't that that you know that 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 ain't have his 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 life together. That they just took everything from you. They just just destroyed your livelihood. In the name of it of giving this man money that he's not even getting. Cause it's not really even about the children. If it's about the children, then do what's right for the children. As long as the children are getting what they need, it doesn't matter who you can't. It doesn't matter who's not paying. It doesn't matter who you can't take from. It doesn't matter who you who you can't drag through the mud. It doesn't matter whose life you can't ruin if it's really all about the kids. Because at the end of the day, if you know this man is broke and he got nothing, what is taking him to child support gonna do but make sure that he, it, it just increases chances of him never having anything. And he might, Get smarter down the line and get his shit together and say, okay, and now I want to leave something for my children, but I can't because the minute I get a house, they're going to take it. The minute I open a bank account, they're going to take my money. So it's kind of like, you know, you, you're really forcing him to live a, like a nasty life. Like, you know, and, and it sucks like, like, like me, for instance, right? Like I... I, I I, I got child support removed off my credit. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. Oh, I'm glad I thought about this. Child support on your credit, okay? You can use these, these letters that you use for the collection agencies for child support. It may work, it may not work. For me, it worked on Equifax. It did not work on TransUnion and it did not work on Experian. To deal with those people, you have to go and and bring the original docket back back in the court okay you you're not gonna i don't care you could you could attack the child support people all you want you could send them letters you could make you could you could you could call them a thousand times you could call the creditors the the, the equifax and transunion and, and and all of them Experian. you could call them a thousand times you could send them a thousand letters once there's a court order, they can't do anything unless that court order is changed. Okay, so coming at these credit bureaus, like I said, you could try because I've tried it and it worked. But it worked for only Equifax, none of the other two. The other two I had to fight a different way. You understand? 
So you could try it, but the, the, the real way to get the stuff removed off your credit is you have to attack the, 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 the initial court proceeding. You have to attack that default judgment or the judgment that was the, the, the that was rendered not in your favor. Okay, you have to go and challenge that in the courts. That's the only way. And you have to bring that original docket number back on the calendar. So it's like you're going in the court saying, okay, yeah, remember that situation from five years ago? Yeah, yeah, put that back on the calendar because something wasn't right about that. And we need to go back in there and talk about it and straighten this out because I was told that we was y'all was supposed to do certain things that just wasn't done. And I'm keeping it real with you. The, the acknowledgement of paternity, when you contest that, when you go in there, it's really nothing they could say. There's nothing they can say, okay, if they didn't do what they were supposed to do, okay? See, but what happens is, I'm going to tell you what they do. In those papers, they say sign here, and they say sign here again. One of the papers is acknowledgement of paternity. The other paper is saying that you was counseled about the acknowledgement of paternity that you never got counseled on or you would have never signed it in the first place. But because we don't read, we just... Okay, so now you sign them in acknowledgement of paternity. And then they hear you one and saying, this one is just, is, is just, this. you signing this one just so you you could uh, sign saying that you received the acknowledgement of paternity. They dupe you. They dupe you. When really they're supposed to say, before you sign this one, I need to let you know that you about to ruin your life. Okay, they're supposed to present the first one to you first. But they present the acknowledgement of paternity to you first. You sign that. And then they go, oh, here, sign this one. This is just saying that you received the acknowledgement of paternity. And then you read and you go, oh, okay. When it should be the other way around. Look at this first. Read this because this is what we're going to take you through if you sign this paper and don't live up to the terms and agreements. Do you agree to that? They're supposed to do that. If they didn't do that, I know it didn't happen to you. It didn't happen to me. Okay? So you got to go in there and let them know. It didn't happen. It didn't happen that way. And you challenge it, and there's the and then there's more than, you know, this. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm. This probably gonna be another part to this because I'm just gonna add some additional stuff. But for most cases, this is this is it. This is all you need, and you could do this on your own. It just take a little studying, for when you go in there, and this is very important. When you put these motions in court, don't go in there freestyling. There's nothing else to say. You already said it. Every time they ask you something, say something from the, the papers you already submitted. There's no, unless they ask you a question outside of that for clarity. But other than that, you just stick to, they call it standing on your square. Just stick to this. Just stick to this. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, if you need help, the link is in the description. You know, I'm giving y'all so much game for free. Like if y'all want me to sit and talk to y'all and walk y'all through y'all particular, y'all personal case, like I said, that's going to cost y'all money because my time is money and I'm already giving enough of, enough of it for free. You know what I'm saying? So, and I don't mind anyway because I just feel like I just, I got a great understanding of this and, and I want to teach people. You know, I want y'all to help yourselves. Like I want, I'm teaching y'all how to help yourselves, you know, to where y'all don't need me and y'all don't, don't need to pay me for anything. But if you want me to help you, then you're going to have to pay. But I'm going to teach you how to help yourself so you don't have to give me anything. But if you want my help, then... I'll give you the help. You know what I'm saying? So that's it, man. Um, yeah, stay tuned. Peace. Let's let it. Oh, yeah, we lit. Lip box. When I'm turned up, it go down. You know how I get, you know how I get. You know I'm legit, you know I'm legit. You know I be lit, you know I be lit. And I'm on a mission to hit every city. When you see me get with me, it's lit. Lit box TV. It's lit.